welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? Who knows? What I do know, and what you know, because you have looked at the thumbnail and you read the title and possibly even read the description, is that this is my second video tutorial using Blue Blood. Now, I've gone a little bit more subtle than my first tutorial. And I'll also be showing you um, photos and talking you through how I created the look that I did yesterday, which I didn't actually film. Uh, yay. I'm guessing you clicked on this because uh, you want to find out how I created this look. But if you are my phantom disliker who has read the head again, please do me a favour, don't just dislike. If you're going to dislike, put a note in the comment and tell me why you didn't like it. Did you not like my application? Did you not like my voice? Or do you just not like Jeffrey? Right. Here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. You've seen from the intro. It's another look with this little beauty. Now, um, I used it yesterday, but I didn't film because I was running late. So I'll put that picture there. <clears throat> Uh, which, as you can see, is a little bit uh, neutral for what I usually wear. But I did get asked, can you do daytime looks, work-appropriate looks? I reckon you could get away with that at work. Maybe a little bit less shimmer on the lid, but you could get away with that. And I used, <clears throat> I started off with Priceless, which I put through the crease and up. Then I used Flourishing, same through the crease but halfway up. Then I used Undertaker to deepen up the outer V and through there. And then I used Cullinan on the lid which mixed with Undertaker to give a very nice pastel blue shimmer. That is the one thing missing from this palette. <clears throat> you have a white shimmer. You have a rose gold shimmer. You have a kind of military blue satin. And then you have like a this one shimmer. Like a mid to deep blue. You have the teal shimmer. And you have the <coughs> the blue kind of glitter, pressed glitter one. If I could add or change one thing in this palette, I would lose this shade here, Wealthy, and I would put a nice kind of, this sort of blue shimmer. So there we go. I have a criticism and it's only the third time I'm using the palette. See? I give you honest reviews, even when it's a brand of makeup that I absolutely adore. And yep, yeah, I fully understand if you're not a Jeffree Star fan, a lot of people aren't. Um, there are a lot of things he's done that even I won't defend. However, liked him since he's, I, I knew about him first because of his music, um, <clears throat> so it's kind of like, it's kind of like one of those friends you've known for a long time, which you, you, you kind of, yeah, they've always been like that, you know. Anyway, face is washed, moisturised, SPF and primed. I've used my usual antiperspirant primer. Link to the film about the mini film about that is down below. And on my eyes, I have got Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I have not set. 
Um, I'm not going to put swatches up if you want to see those. It's in my first video using blood sugar. Let's get you zoomed in. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm hay fever has started already. Fabulous. It's also really cloudy and really awful out there. So uh, expect my white balance to go up and down. Right, as always, my films are aimed at everybody from complete beginners to absolute ruddy experts. So, I take you through each step, stage by stage. I do both eyes on camera. I don't cut out any blending. Um, <clears throat> and uh, if I'm going too slowly for you, there's a speed widget. It's either up there or down there. Please feel free to use it. Don't whinge at me that I'm going too slowly. I have chronic pain. I can't blend quicker than I'm going. And also, remember what it was like when you were a beginner and you were having to follow on. Okay? Be patient. <laughs> Welcome to my TED talk. <coughs> right. Now, I've got deep set eyes, which means when I look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lids. I haven't got a hooded lid. If your static lid covers part or all of your mobile lid, you have either a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorial. What I mean by deep set eyes is if I cover up my mobile lid this side and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again which tucks back in. <clears throat> so I totally understand the issues that people have with hooded lids where you get transference of shades onto the upper lid. Um, when you cut your crease you can't just do a nice little half moon because that, that's not going to work for us. Um, when you apply glitter, even with glitter glue, you still get some of it rubbing off, so I totally get where you're coming from. It's bloody frustrating. I'll show you as many ways as I can to help deal with these issues. First one being creating your own crease. So if you have part or all of your lid hidden, all you need to do is grab a brush, something like this, with your eye open, just sketch where you need your crease to fall. Okay? Obviously, that reduces the space between the crease and the brow. So, when I'm using a super fluffy brush, just use one that's slightly more tapered. And if I'm using a super tapered brush, then, you know, use something like these. Or, um, like this, which is a tapered crease brush. Okay? Just remember, the key thing to remember is whatever size the head of the brush is, that's how far it's going to blend the shadow out. Okay? Right, this is one of my Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro crease brushes. By far the best brushes I've ever used, and this was two pounds, people. And it is the softest brushes ever. <clears throat> right. I'm going to do, funnily enough, a blue look again today. Right, I'm going to start off by dipping into I'm Cold. Okay. And I'm just going to, because obviously I've not set this base yet, so I'm just going to tap this across and then start gently wiggling. Now, when you've not set your base, this will initially be patchy. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Right. I'm going to take this up the eye. So again, I'm just going to initially just pat the pigment into place where I want it. And then I'm going to very gently buff backwards and forwards with it. And then do our usual 
circular windscreen wipers because what we've done by putting this this pigment down we've effectively set the lid okay but because some of these are quite light you are best using them on a non-set base because then you just get that little bit of extra oomph when you initially lay them down so you have to do a lot less building up Okay. so I'm just doing a mixture of circular movements and buffing just to make sure everything is blended out without any gaps now if I get anywhere where I've got a gap I'll just tap a little bit more pigment on and tap to blend because I do struggle here and here because of creases to my eye to get the pigment to build up but you can see by looking at this bit here it's my eye making that go patchy not the actual pigment but I'm going to be popping another colour on top so I'm not overly worried at the moment oh well my ASMR voice has completely gone out the window today hasn't it honestly it needs to not do this I've got four collabs planned yes four collabs it's marvellous Two of them are people I've collabed with before, and two of them are new collabies. Mm. So, if you want to, in the comments, have a guess. Um, um, <laughs> it's reminded me to take some tablets, and I took them before I started. <clears throat> So, but as I was saying, have a guess in the comments who you think I'm going to be collabing with and who you would love to see me collab with. I mean, there's people that I would love to collab with, with you know, they, they don't even, they haven't got a clue who I am. You know, I mean, ugh, people like, um... Lacey from actually Lacey from Spookalips and Fat Hips does know who I am. Um, we have chatted a couple of times on Insta and stuff, but I haven't really been brave enough to suggest a collab yet. And I've kind of mentioned it in passing, but not actually put the question through. You know, um, yeah, I'd love to do a collab with Lacey. I'd love to do a collab with Georgia Harris. Um, I'd like to do a collab with Nady, but obviously I'd have to put a warning on for my godchildren to not watch Nady's film because he's a little bit with the language. Um, who else would I like to collab with? Uh, Paulina. I'd like to collab with Paulina at some point. Maybe Bronze Marley. My bitch. I'm not being rude. He put up on um, Twitter a while ago that he wanted, he, he missed having friends that he could just call bitch. And I'm like, alright, I'll be a pint of milk white bitch then, that's fine. <laughs> He's been giggling about it ever since. Right, so as you can see, <clears throat> for a super pale shade, on a non-set base that's built up really really quite nicely always sit back um, and have a look at both eyes because I don't know about you but my eyes are not symmetrical um, and I very often have to do a slightly different shape on one eye to the other to make them look the same so always just sit back and check that you've got the same depth of colour both sides and the same kind of shape on the edging and you've gone up as high both sides, you know, just, just little things like that. 
I like to try and, unless I'm doing a really editorial look, I will try and leave sort of three, four mils below my brow there. So I've got a pale strip of um, just matte skin, basically. So that when I put my brow highlight on, it really notices. Uh, that's especially important if you're going to do an all shimmer look as well, otherwise you just you lose the brow highlight totally. I'm just using my clean washcloth to get the colour off of this, but as you can see, it's already started to stain. Which shows you just how much pigment are in these colours, because I'm Cold is not one of the pressed pigments. The pressed pigments are untouchable, Blue Monday and Ocean Ice, so, you know. Right, <clears throat> I am now going to go in with, on the same brush by the way, I'm going to go into Blue Blood, which has got the crown on it. Let's see if I can show that before I, see, pretty crown, look at that, Wee. <clears throat> now I'm just going to go in and destroy the pretty crown. Well, okay, this one, much looser packed. Tap your brush off or you's gone get blue freckles everywhere. <laughs> right, so now this is set, I can kind of treat it as I would do a normal eyeshadow look. So I'm going to start over at this corner here and just gently windscreen wipe it backwards and forwards. If you've had to raise your crease, just do this along the line that you've created, okay? And I'm just going to pick up some of the kick up off the top of that pan. Tap off. This really does pick up a lot of pigment. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do circular movements, but I'm not going to travel up the eye this time. Because I still want that very, very pale blue to have its moment. So I'm just going to very gently and lightly buff backwards and forwards along this line. I'm holding it right at the end of the brush so I'm putting barely any pressure on my eye at all. Just gently buffing that colour in. And as you can see, that blends beautifully. Beautiful. And then we're going to do the same thing this side. So, windscreen wiper backwards and forwards initially. And then pick up some of your kick up. Tap off. And little circular movements all the way across and back again. But we're not going up the eye at all, we're just focusing it on. We're kind of going halfway up that first colour we put down, basically. So if you need to change to a smaller brush head to do that, then do so. Because I've got deep set eyes, I've got a lot of lid to play with. So I'm lucky in that respect. Um, but if you don't have as much lid, then just use a slightly smaller brush at this point. How's your taping? I feel so rude, I haven't even asked you. I'm so excited about playing with this palette. Um, I hope it's been a good day. Or, if you're like Christopher J, M-U-A, who watches me in the morning to ease himself into his day, good morning, Christopher. I hope you're going to have a very good day. And the same goes for all of my 4F family that are watching me. Have a good day, lunch, afternoon, evening or night, depending on where in the world you are and what time of day you're watching me. Oh, I do love this. There is a slight connotation of blue eyeshadow being very 80s or 70s or 80s. Um, but I think if you, if you wear it, if you're careful with it when you apply it, <clears throat> and uh, as you can see, I got a little bit of fallout from that. It's not too much of a problem because I haven't done my base yet anyway. Um, I just think 
I think for me, I associate a shimmery blue all the way up the eye as being very sort of 70s and 80s, very ABBA. But there's no reason why you can't wear blue. If you're scared of blue initially, then do yourself a neutral eye and just use a pop of blue on the lid or underneath the eye just to to start to get you used to it and then maybe do the pop of blue and a dark blue to smoke the eye out with and then before long you're going to be feeling brave enough to do this kind of thing. Right, I'm just going to pop back into I'm Cold and pick up some of that and just because I don't want to lose that pale blue so I'm just going to buff over where the two colours meet just to make sure we don't lose any of the lighter blue. <clears throat> I am so sorry about my voice, folks. <sighs> ASMR video. I'm going to cough and splutter and sound like a husky dog. Mm. I'm sounding like Marge Bloody Simpson is what I'm sounding like. Right. Hmm, I like I like a lot. Right, so, clean my brush off. And now I'm going to get a more tapered brush. I think I'm going to go in with this. This is the Morphe 321. It originally arrived snapped in half. So I sent Morphe a picture and they sent me a replacement. Didn't need me to send the broken one back. So I've just mended it, basically. So, I am now going to go into, I want to try and use colours that I haven't already used. So, I'm going to go in with Deceased, even though it's a satin, because depending on what kind of brush you use to apply them, and what techniques you use to apply them. Satins and shimmers, you can blend them in such a way that the majority of the shine disappears and you're left with the base pigment. Okay? So, I'm just going to pop into Deceased and get a bit of pigment on my brush. Look at that, isn't that the most beautiful cobalt blue? Right, I'm initially just going to tap this onto the corner of my eye. Bearing in mind the lid still isn't set. Let's just run this through. I might need a different brush actually. Just run that through the crease there. Yeah, I think I need a different brush. This one's not picking up very well. <clears throat> Let's grab... Right, this is a Royal and Lang Nickel Chic Pro Eyeshadow Brush. Come on, concentrate on the brush. There we go. Which is this kind of shape. So I'm going to go into Deceased and pick some of that up on this brush. Deceased is quite firmly packed, there's not a huge amount of kick up in the pan. Yeah, there we go, that's, I think that's laying the pigment down a bit better, isn't it? Right, and then I'm just going to buff through the crease again. up a tiny little bit of pigment on the brush <clears throat> and this time when I blend I'm not going to go up the eye at all I'm just going to try and blend out the edges of that crease so I'm just using the tips of the bristles just to gently buff the edges of that deeper blue that we've put in. Just to soften it. But I don't want it to completely cover the um, blue blood that we've put down. 
Now I am getting a bit of fallout with this one, but it is a shimmer and I'm using it as a matte, so that's hardly surprising. So if you're going to do this, either do your base after your eyes, or put some loose powder down to catch any fallout. I'm just going to build that outer edge up a little bit. Ooh, I like how this is looking. One thing I am noticing with this deceased though is I think it's going to be one that's going to be prone to hard pan. I really hope the neighbour swearing didn't just get caught on my camera. If it has, I apologise. I'll do whatever I can in post-edit to cover up his F-bomb. Problem is, any minute now we're going to get a dibba 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 men nut. Right. And again, buff it through our crease. And then gently buff the edges of that crease out. If necessary, pick up a little bit more pigment so that you don't buff the pigment away. This can be a problem sometimes with blues. Blues are one of the most difficult colours to cultivate or create. Um, and you can get a problem if you, you know, when you're blending them, particularly if you're using a satin as a mat, which is obviously what I'm doing, you can sometimes have the issue of sort of blending the pigment away. But you just pick up a little bit more pigment. Because what we're doing now, by blending like this, is we're kind of, we're buffing all the shimmer off of the top and just leaving the base pigment underneath. Now I do have really, really deep creasing on this eye because it got pulled around when I was five, six years old at the ophthalmic, so I'm just going to double check. Yeah, I've got striping there, so I'm just going to... Just going to deal with that striping. Don't put your lid around like this unless you absolutely have to. Um, unfortunately, I know from experience I actually have to. And bearing in mind that in a month's time I'm going to be 45. So 40 years ago, my eyes got pulled around and it's left me with super deep creasing. So the skin on your eyes is the thinnest skin on your body and the most delicate so please be careful with it right let's clean that brush off I'm going to go back in with this Morphe M321 just want to deepen this corner up a little bit so now shall I go into power or shall I go into cremated they're both grey, as you can see. This is power, this is cremated. So power is a cool tone, and cremated is a slightly warmer tone, and it's a bit deeper. I'll just... right. Power, cremated. If I buff those out. You can see, actually, cremation has got more of a, a bluey undertone to it, whereas power is a more true grey. Okie dokie. That was actually quite helpful. Because you can't always go by swatches. Sometimes you need to blend it out on your hand to see how it's going to look when you get it on your eye. So I'm going to go into a little bit of cremated. A lot of kick up in the pan. Awful lot of kick up in the pan on this one. I don't know if you can see there. Let's see. Huge amount of kick up in that pan. I'm just going to pop this 
just onto this outer edge, just on the V, to deepen it up just a fraction. And then I'll probably take it about halfway along the crease line. I don't want to go all the way along because then we're going to lose some deceased. But this cremated is a really pretty colour. Hmm, I like that. It's almost got a greenish undertone to it. Like a, a teal undertone almost to this grey. This is pretty. This would make a lovely smoky eye. Ooh, might have to try a blue smoky eye with some glitter. What do we think, folks? Do you want me to do that as my next tutorial? Smoky eye using ocean ice as the glitter? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. What I did like was um, my my latest film went live this morning at 6am UK time and the first person to comment on it was the wonderful Dustin Daly. I love that little man. I think he is awesome. There's so much drama going on. <laughs> so if you're watching this one Dustin, hi! <laughs> I must admit, I did plots a little bit when um, I saw he was not only following me, but commenting. I was like, oh my god, Dustin is watching me. Uh, and I got the notification that he'd commented on... Um, the first comment that he put, I think he put like notification squad on one of my films. And I was actually watching one of his videos when the notification came in that he'd commented on one of mine. And I was like... <gasps> So yeah, I had a bit of a, a bit of a fangirl moment there. I like this. I like this a lot. As it happens. I'm just dusting that away because I know it's going to bug the heck out of me otherwise in... When I'm editing I'm going to be like, for goodness sake woman, will you dust the fool out away? Even though there's no point because I'm... You know, I'm going to be doing my crease later, my base later anyway, so. Now. Here's the dilemma. I don't have a nice light blue shimmer I can put on my lid. I could do an all matte look, I suppose, but with that nice smoky eye, I want something shimmery on the lid. See, I could do that sort of rose goldy kind of. But I was going to do an all blue look, wasn't I? Well, I did do an all blue look the first time I did a look on here. So maybe I can use that instead. Right, okay. Yep, decision is made. Now, I'm not going to cut my crease because I don't want it this morning. But also because I want to see whether the shimmer has enough pigment in it to cover some of this matte that's come onto the lid itself okay now i know that cullinan did yesterday because it picked up because i'd used um undertaker on the corner and it actually picked up some of the undertaker and actually blended to make a really pretty light blue which is what made me realize that that's what's missing from this palette there's no shimmery light blue and like I said I would just I would have got rid of the wealthy shade because to be honest Caucasians will probably use that to set their lid anybody who's an NC sort of 30 or more you ain't going to be able to use that what's the point of it being there you might just as well take that out because you know if, if people want a skin toned colour Pretty sure they've got a million of those in shit ton of other palettes. So yeah, I would have taken Wealthy out and put a nice, like a crystally blue, icy shimmer in. But, that's just me. So, this is, actually, it looks like it should be a Jeffrey brush. 
but it's a cheap one from AliExpress and I liked it because it got green on the end as well. Mm. Uh, but it's basically a small pack of brush like this. So I'm going to go into Crystal Flesh, which I swear I thought was a Crystal Meth first time I looked at the palette and I'm like, mm. Again, this shimmer is super soft. I'm absolutely destroying the star with like when I first pick up the shimmer. Now I'm going to wet this. Obviously you don't put a wet brush into a set shimmer. That will give you hard pan. Uh, I'm just using, I've got a little bit of this left. This is the Obsession Pigment Boost. You can use anything. You can use the moisturising spray like Mario Badescu or Fix Plus. You can use a priming spray, you can use a setting spray, like, you know, Slay All Day, or um, All Nighter, or you can just use clean water. Right. Wet the pigment, and I always dry the ferrule off, because I don't want any water going down and loosening the glue that holds the uh, bristles in. Right. Let's see how this performs on the lid. Ooh, pretty. Not as pigmented as I was expecting. I'm just going to dry the brush off on the um, washcloth. That's the word I'm looking for. This doesn't have as much pigment as the colour none did, which surprises me, because normally Jeffrey's shimmers are absolutely bang on. I mean, don't get me wrong, this has got pigment because it is covering the matte shade. But I don't normally have to dig in this many times to get that and that. I'm going to try putting this on dry. Just see if that... Obviously I'm going to get more fallout with it going on dry. But I think... Now obviously I've got a wet coat on there, which I've now gone over with a dry one. And that seems to have given me a bit more coverage. But... Hmm... Just going to grab my M321 and go back into cremated. Just to buff that edge there. Hmm. Hmm. completely wipe the entire load of pigment off then. Well done, Ange. I was drying the ferrule and my thumb slipped and went to all the pigment off the brush. Love fibrospasms. They're great. Look. They have a rose gold thumb. There's lovely. Right now, because of the deep creases on this eye, I do have to stretch the lid out, otherwise the shimmer skips across the top of the creases and then I get fallout all through the day. Don't do this unless you absolutely ruddy well have to. Right, do you see what I mean? Now normally, one dip into a Jeffrey shimmer would absolutely cover this opaquely. But I feel like I need to go in again to 
make sure it's covering the blue, which I don't know whether this is meant to be a topper shade, maybe. But normally I would not have to dip in twice to cover that first bit of my eye. Um, like I said, I don't know if this is actually meant to be a topper shade, but it certainly doesn't have the same level of pigment or opacity as Cullinan that I used yesterday. Because I did this yesterday, I used Cullinan without cutting the crease. I'm just going to go over it again like I did the other side with a dry pigment now. advice with this shade is either cut your crease or apply a dry coating once you've put your damp coating on, your sprayed coating kind of thing. I think I need to go a little bit further across on this one, don't I? Even the eyes up. Yeah, see, when you just go on with a dry one, you do not get the same shine. So you kind of have to go on with a wet layer first. dry my brush off. Pick up a dry layer and kind of pack that on top. That does not perform the way most Jeffreys perform. Again, I'm just going to buff the corners with a little bit of cremated just to get them even. Right, <clears throat> I am going to go off camera and do my foundation and everything and I'll be back to finish off this eye look. So I'll see you right now. I'm back. Okay, as you can see, that little bit there decided it was going to stay there. So that helps me decide what colour I'm going to use underneath my eye. So, <clears throat> oh that was attractive. Right, flat top brush and I'm going to go into a cremated which is the tealy grey that I used here. And I'm going to connect it up and bring it along underneath my eye like so. Pretty. And again this side, connect it up and flinch because it's my blind eye and I don't want to try and poke myself in the eye which I do on a very regular basis. I also end up travelling it too far down because obviously no peripheral vision, relying on muscle memory yada 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 oh fantastic and the neighbour puts his music on great something else for me to try and filter out I swear it's like 
when he's in that house on his own, it's like he's a bloody teenager. It really is. Right, which colour do I want to use to buff the bottom row out with? Bottom row? Bottom lashes out with? Um, it's a very good question. Because it's got a bit of green in it, I think I might go in with mint tea. Uh, because I quite like the look of that. That's kind of a very, very pale turquoise. So, I'm just going to buff that just underneath bottom lashes, just to soften the deeper colour and give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a nice little buff there. Hmm, that's pretty. And there we go, taking it too far down this side. Which means I've then got to make the other side match. Actually, I didn't go down as far as I thought. Stupid woman. That's from Allo Allo. For those of you who are non-UK viewers and maybe haven't seen that show. Gordon Kay is Oh, I know. The Randy Cafe owner. I used to love that show. The bizarre thing was, that show went on longer than the Second World War did. Which is obviously when it was based. For those of you who, again, are UK based, don't know. Right. I like that. I am going to pop off camera just while I do um, mascara lippy and do something with my hair because no I haven't done highlight no I haven't done highlight so I'm going into platinum ice because it just seems appropriate and I am gonna go into glacier I think now a little tip for you these ones do get hard pan they're Jeffrey's original formula, as you can see. See that? So what I do is I have an old spoolie here. And I very gently rub that spoolie just across the top of the pan. And this produces just enough loose pigment for me to pick up on my brush. That doesn't damage the um, picture on it too much so you can still see the little star that's just a bit of a tip for you if you've because uh, Jeffrey's ones I think they must have a lot of moisturizing oils or something in them because they do get hard pan so quickly his later ones are not the same I mean sarcophagus doesn't do it Uranus doesn't do it or Uranus um, but yeah his earlier ones do and um, this is obviously the same kind of formula. So as you can see, I did it seriously with the music. I'm going to get bloody copyright striped, aren't I? I'm not even sodding monetized and I'm going to get a copyright strike. Right, so up under the brow and in a corner and under here. If I've had to put music on, it's because it's music I have permission to use from the composer because I can't filter out his music without covering my voice up too much. Now with my shape eye I've actually found that if I continue the highlight along just under this bit here just to meet him with colours I've got coming under my eye I just find that really opens my eye up and gives me a really nice wide awake look which trust me this morning is needed I definitely need to mainline some coffee once I've finished doing this there right now I'm gonna go off camera and do mascara lippy 
and bung some more of this highlight on my face, do something with my hair, and I'll be back. Honestly, fibro fog. I'm back. Right, uh, mascara was the Catrice Glamondol Volume Waterproof. Lippy is Revolution X Soap in Cake. Uh, bronzer is the Butter Bronzer in shade Bronzer. And blush is MUA Blushed in Rose Tea. Bang on Duke for Milani Tea Rose, by the way. But cheaper. Okay, right. Let's have a chat through, initially, the shades that I used yesterday. Now, I'll stick the picture up here again. I used Priceless, which is the peachy colour. Now that took quite a bit of building up before it got to the stage that you could actually see it against my skin. But I am super, super pale, so if you're darker than me, it probably would show up um, more quickly on your skin but I had to do a fair amount of working to get that to build up to that kind of shade. Um, then I used flourishing over the top which blended really beautifully. Uh, Undertaker on the corner took a little bit of a little bit of extra blending but it's a deep colour so that doesn't surprise me. Um, and then I used Cullinan on the mobile lid which as I said I didn't cut the crease and it picked up some undercut Undertaker and gave the ice white a bit of a light blue shift which I thought was really, really, really pretty. Um, and that's what made me realise that's what was missing from this palette. Um, so okay, that's the, that's the shades I used yesterday. Now to get onto the shades that I used today. Um, I'm Cold and Blue Blood, the mattes. Really fantastic pigmentation, you could see didn't take a huge amount of time to build up, blended well together, didn't blend away when I started the circular movements. Deceased, now obviously Deceased is a, is a satin that I was using as a matte, so there was a fair amount of fallout with that. Um, and I had to make sure I used the right kind of brush with it. I think Deceased is going to be the kind of shade that will get hard pan on it. Um, it's just a swatch of it there. I, I think that is going to be one that will get hard pan. Um, so I may have to utilise my... Just stuck my thumb straight under Undertaker. I may have to utilise my uh, scratchy scratchy like I do with the um, highlights. Cremated was a really beautiful surprise. that I didn't realise that I had so much sort of bluey green as an undertone. That's really pretty. I definitely want to use that again. Um, and obviously then I, I continue, I use that under the eye and I smoked it out with mint tea, which is the pale turquoise. And again, that's buffed out beautifully. Uh, so, so far, that's all good. Uh, Crystal Flesh. This rose gold. My lights were completely wiping out. Uh, rose gold shimmer. Um, now I don't know whether that is actually designed to be a topper because you can see it's got, when I swatch it, it it's got beautiful reflect and that's what I was expecting to get, um, you know, reflect and opacity. But in order to get that opacity, um, I had to dip in quite a few times when it was wet and then go over it again with um, like a dry topping just to to build up the opacity but then of course by using a dry topping you're losing some of that shimmer um, I will continue to play with that I'll try it with um, some different brushes I'll, I might try using it with one of my silicon brushes to see whether that gives me a better result uh, but at the moment that's my my thoughts so far. So Crystal Flesh needed a lot more building up than I was expecting. Um, Deceased 
looks like it's going to get a hard pan on it, so be careful which brushes you use with it. Cremated was a lovely surprise with that beautiful sort of greeny blue undertone, and it's missing a shimmery light blue. Howsoever, would I still buy this? Yes. Um, I'm absolutely loving this. It's some of the best performing blues that I've used. I think this one and probably Hasina 2 from Blush Tribe are the best performing blues that I've used. And I've used a lot of eyeshadows. Um, but I, I really like how this look has turned out. It's beautifully sort of spring, summer look. Uh, and I, I thoroughly enjoy it. So, yeah. Highlight is Glacier from the Platinum Ice palette. So, there we go. That's my second tutorial, but technically third look with the Blue Blood palette. So, I hope you found that helpful. If there are any shades in here you want to see me use that I haven't tried yet, let me know in the comments box and I will endeavour to meet your request because I'm just really enjoying playing with the new palette to be quite honest. <coughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Don't forget to double check you're still subscribed because YouTube do unsubscribe people regularly from my channel. You know what else to do. You know that if you like it, hit like. You know that, you know, leave me a comment, share it, subscribe, check you're subscribed, ring the bell. When you ring the bell, say you want all notifications. I've got a lot of other videos to watch, um, you know, if you haven't seen my first look with Blue Blood, you know, nip over, have a look, see what you think, tell me which of the two you prefer. first look was a far more bold, in-your-face editorial look, but uh, you know, I, I still went out with my eyes like that during the day. Yeah. But then I think people are used to seeing me with... Um, all kinds of looks on my eyes to be quite fair so yeah as I said I hope you enjoyed this all it remains for me to say as ever you'll stay fabulous I'll see you next time bye for now